Number 54, an AC appliance cord has its hot neutral valve separated by three millimeters and carries a five amp current. Letter A, what is the average force per meter between the wires in this cord? All right, so please check out number 54. Uh, it's basically an identical problem and I, I explained the concept. I, I think, I don't wanna brag, but I think pretty well. Um, in any case, I'm gonna use a formula now that I derived from that equation right here, okay? So it says that the force acting on wire A is equal to two times 10 to the minus seventh multiplied by the current in wire A times the length of wire A times the current in the other wire, meaning wire B, divided now by R, or the R represents the distance between them, okay? So if I wanna find the force, it's asking for the force per meter, I have to divide, just like in the last problem, I gotta divide the length of A on out, and now if you notice, this is newtons per meter, or AKA force per meter. So this is down my formula here, okay? If I wanna clean it up a little bit, I just move this on over, look at how nice and easy that is, right? And all you gotta do now is basically plug it on in. And that's the benefit of doing practice, right? That you start seeing faster ways to do this. So each current in each wire is five amps, so you're just gonna plug in five, and then divide it by the distance between them. They told you three millimeters, but you know we need that in meters. So that's gonna be three times 10 to the minus three, and just calculate. So it's gonna be two times 10 to the minus three, oh, excuse me, minus seventh. What am I talking about? How did that get to a three when it's a, clearly a seven up there? <clears throat> two times 10 to the minus seventh, multiplied by five times five, divided by three times 10 to the minus three. So this works out to be the force per length is going to be 1.67 times 10 to the minus three newtons per meter, all right? So that takes care of that one. Okay, oh, missed the I. All right, so let's move that on over. So that is letter A. Now it says, remember we were calculating average force now, okay? So now letter B, it's saying, what is the maximum force per meter? All right, so basically we're gonna use the same formula here, okay? We're gonna use the same formula as this one. Now the only difference is that, let's do this. So the only difference here is now that the current um, that they gave us, it didn't mention it, but it's if it's asking for the average force per meter and we calculated it using this current, well, what that means is that we made an assumption. It means that we assumed that this current was the average current, okay? But they're talking about an AC appliance, so you should know AC current, right? Alternating current has average values and max or peak values. So in other words, if we assume this is the average now, and I plug those average values in here, then what I did was I found the average force per meter. But now if I wanna find the max force per meter, what do you think I need? I need now the max currents. So the question is then, how do we go from average AC current to max current? Well, you have to remember this relationship that the current max or the max current is equal to root two times the average current, okay? So now, instead of now plugging in average values here, we have to plug in max values, right? Now remember, these are both the same because they're said that the currents are the same in each wire, so their peaks or their maxes will also be the same. So instead of writing A and B down there, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just write a little max, watch. Little max, okay, max. Now we don't know the max current, but we do know the average current because we assume that that's the average because that's how we did the prior calculation. So what I realize now is I can basically substitute this on in now for my max values, right? Because they're e that whole thing is equal to the max current. And if you notice when we do that now, two times 10 to the minus seventh, this now will become root two times I average times root two times I average. And well, wait a, wait a minute now, root two times root two is what? It's just two, right? So this whole thing now essentially reduces on down to, so let me get rid of this, right? So this thing now becomes I average times I average, obviously that's I average squared, right? So you could just write I uh, average squared times then two, and that's it now. All right, that's the formula. Now if you notice uh, when I wrote the formula out initially, yeah, I used A's and B's, and although in this problem they are the same, they might not be in future problems, so please don't just square them right off the bat. Otherwise, you're gonna get into all kinds of trouble. 
all right so now all we have to do is really just plug it in right so it's going to be the same formula as this actually just multiplied by two basically all right so plug in all your values there you got it right and then we're just gonna i'm just gonna take that answer multiply it by two because it's that straightforward and it's going to be 3.33 now times 10 to the minus three newtons per meter and that takes care of letter b Alrighty. Oh, there's more. Are the forces attractive or uh, repulsive? So let's see. Uh, between a cord has appliance a neutral wire separated by. Yeah. So basically, um, when the, so you'd have to know a little bit about the direction of these things. I don't know how you'd be expected to know that, but the cord has two wires in it. One wire, if you ever cut an electrical cord, if you cut it, please make sure it's not plugged in. Okay. Because otherwise then. We'll see in the afterlife. So um, one wire in that out of the two will be carrying current uh, to the appliance. Then this is the appliance. And then that other current carries it, that other wire, excuse me, carries it back. So since they're pointing in opposite directions, the force here between them will be repulsive. Okay, they'll be pointing away. Why is it the case? Check out number 50 and number 53. All right. Uh, but they're they're going to be repulsive in this case. So that's the answer. Do appliance cores need any special design features to compensate uh, for these forces? Um, you know, this this force per meter is like nothing. I mean, it's piddlins. So, I mean, they wrap it up in a wire coating, you know, in a plastic coating basically to protect it, um, but not to keep it really together. It's really nothing. Anyway, all right, that's it. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.